and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're hanging out on Thrustmaster Island, and we're going to be looking at virtual FIPS or VFIPS, and how we can use them in SPAD.next to give us pop out instrumentation, especially on planes that you can't pop out the instruments. So let's go ahead, jump into it, and get started. So when we come into SPAD.next, we want to add virtual FIPS. Now, first thing to understand is virtual FIPS are an add-on. So if you're on the standard edition, you do have to add virtual FIPS. They aren't uh, included in the base system. Now, of course, the base Microsoft Flight Sim FSX P3D version, that will support physical FIPS. So if you have the actual SciTech FIPS, like I do, you can use those. However, this is going to use the virtual FIP feature, which brings us a couple of additions. One of them is we can create these things and run them on popped out gauges, which we're going to focus on in this video. In a follow-up video, we'll focus on how you can actually run virtual FIP software on a separate computer to then plug your FIPS into. Now, this could be a computer that's going to do a pop-up display as well, or it could be because you want your physical FIPS being rendered on a separate PC. The benefit of that, of course, is it uses less resources from your main PC. So the first step is we need to add some virtual devices. So we come to the plus key for add-ons. Just like we come here for data monitor, event monitor, you're going to find virtual devices. And right now we have our virtual FIPS. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a virtual FIP. And so for each flight instrument panel, you can load a different gauge. So let's go ahead while we're here and just add a few extra. Since we're flying Cessna 172, I'm going to go ahead and get six of these enabled. Now that we've done that, we do need to restart SPAD.next. So we're going to go ahead, close it down, and start it back up. Now that we've relaunched it, you notice we have an extra device class on the submenus. So home, profiles, panels, controls like joysticks, and now we've got our FIPS. So of course, they resemble a real physical FIP. However, we're going to be able to load gauges, and then we're going to start to detach these and be able to place these on separate monitors. So now comes to how we add and remove gauges. So here we have our add gauge. And so when we click on this, it's going to take you and it's going to bring up the default folders it has set up. Now I've got some extra folders for additional FIP devices, which I've placed in additional folders. You'll notice that the original SciTech ones are included. So you can easily load up 16 different standard SciTech FIP instruments that came with the standard FIPS. You'll also find that there are a select few of the online ones that are also free. So these were gauges, uh, some of the gauges that were posted on AvSim and some other locations. Basically, you can also add your own folders. So just like me, where I've got the fipgages.com folder stuff, well, that's because I went into my documents under spad.next under gauges, and I added a folder called fipgages.com where I was placing all of my gauges, which I purchased from fipgages.com. So let's go ahead and use this for our AI. So these are basically the barren gauges. So that will now show up there. So we've got an AI and you could add multiple gauges and then be able to change between them on a single FIP. When you have one physical FIP, even when it's a virtual FIP, so this is running as a virtual so that we can connect uh, 
a separate computer that's connecting physical FIPS. Again, we'll cover that in a later video. Um, you may want multiple gauges because you don't have enough of them and you want to toggle between them. Obviously, with the virtual FIP world, we can create as many as we like. So at this point, I'm just going to leave the one on it. I'm going to jump over to my next FIP and I'm going to add a gauge. And for this one, I want to make sure to have an HSI. So we'll load that gauge up. Then we're going to go to virtual number two or three because this is zero based. We also need our airspeed indicator. Make our six pack more usable. Then of course, we want to add our altimeter. We're now going to add a turn coordinator, which I don't see one here in the free section. So that's okay. We will add the VSI for now. And we can just head on over, go to the included SciTech ones, and we'll borrow that turn coordinator for now. Now that you have gauges attached, you can go ahead and you could program these soft buttons. So using a mouse or a touchscreen, you would still be able to click on those soft buttons and add events, just like any other button. Same thing with the knob. Now some gauges have events coded into them. As soon as you map something to the knob, it will overwrite that. So now that we have these gauges mapped out and connected, let's go ahead and detach them so that we can start placing them. So now that I've detached this gauge, it's popped it out and it put it on one of my other monitors. And now we have it and we can find it and go ahead and float it around. Let's go ahead and get all of them detached. So you can see you've now got these gauges and when they show up, you'll notice when you hover on top, you go to the one side, you'll get the switch buttons you come down here and you get the knobs each one you can close it so it'll put it back into the spad ui you can hover over the move so you can drag and drop it somewhere else you can reset the size if you adjust the size and then you have settings down in the corner you can click to drag now one of the things I noticed is it doesn't lock aspect ratio, so you have to do that yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move my gauge to where I want it. Keep in mind that with spad.next, you can also set in your settings the ability to remember window positions. That way with these devices and profiles when I load this profile it's going to pop out all of these windows and place them in this configuration going forward we're setting up our standard six pack somebody's going to be like your HSI doesn't go on the top each one you can have a limit to 10 frames per second so depending on performance and what it might be doing to your computer to render all these, you can reduce the frames per second. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set all six to not have this 10 FPS limitation. So now that we're back into the sim and we're going to go flying, we can already see this huge benefit to having the gauges right in front of us. Everything is nicely running for us. 
which is so cool. Well, there you have it. That's everything you need to do to get started with the virtual FIPS, popping them out to a separate screen and being able to get those instruments and go flying. If you haven't, please hit that like button. Also, if you've taken the time to watch a few videos, maybe consider subscribing. It always helps out the channel. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.